Good morning, friends in Christ. We are glad that you're joining us on this Friday morning as we continue to go through the book of Job. And so good morning. And once you get out your Bibles, you can turn to Job chapter 28. And then you can go ahead and hit the share button as we continue to build believers to reach out and connect people to Jesus. Job chapter 28 this morning. Job continues in his response to Bildad. And in Job 28, the big question is, where is wisdom? What is it? Where do we find it? And so that's the big question for us today. Where is wisdom? And so when you think of wisdom, what do you think of? And where do you go to find it? And what is it? And so we're going to discuss that today in Job 28. And so good morning. We're glad that you're joining us. Job chapter 28, it's important for us to remember the historical context of the book of Job when we ask this question, where is wisdom? That Job is put in the Old Testament with the wisdom writings, and that wisdom, it's going to show us, is God's response to suffering, and we're going to see his response at the end of the book. And as we look at the historical context, that's where Job is placed with the wisdom writings because of the Hebrew poetry and the wisdom that is in and found in the book of Job. But remember, historically, when did Job live? The time of the patriarchs, probably around the time of Abraham. And so who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Moses. And Abraham came before Moses. And so that lets us know and reminds us that Job did not have the first five books of the Bible. He didn't have the Torah, and he didn't have the scriptures. And so his knowledge of God is coming from creation and from his conscience and his relationship with the Creator. And so he doesn't have what you and I have, and that is the revealed Word of God. And so that changes some things, right? Especially when it comes to wisdom. Because what does the Bible say about wisdom? Wisdom is the word of God. And what's wise is to follow it and to keep it and to believe it and trust it and do it. That is wisdom. Biblically, foolishness is the ways of the world. And when we do those things and follow those things, then we are being foolish. Because the ways of the world and the ways of God go against each other right? And so that's important for us. Wisdom for us is found in not just the Word of God, but in Jesus Christ himself. Jesus is wisdom. Well, this is way before the cross. This is before the first five books of the Bible were written with Job. And so it's important for us to remember that. And so Job 28, where is wisdom? He continues. He says, surely there is a mine for silver and a place for gold that they refine. Iron is taken out of the earth, and copper is smelted from the ore. Man puts an end to darkness and searches out to the farthest limit, the ore, in gloom and deep darkness. He opens shafts in a valley away from where anyone lives. They are forgotten by travelers. They hang in the air far away from mankind. They swing to and fro. As for the earth, out of it comes bread, but underneath it is turned up as by fire. Its stones are the places of sapphires, and it has a dust of gold. And so he says, where is wisdom? He says, man will do whatever it can to search for wealth, to search for prosperity. And he uses the analogy and the examples here of how man searches for gold and silver and sapphires and precious metals and precious resources, and that man will not stop looking for them. He will dig, he will search, he will travel, he will go in the mountains, the cliffs, he'll go in all different places in the, in the earth to search for precious metals. And when he finds them, he will work them for wealth and prosperity. And so that's where he's starting. And so as he's going to answer this question, where is wisdom? He starts with man and how hard he will diligently search for riches and precious metals and gold and silver, and all that jazz. He goes on to say, verse 7, 
that path no bird or prey knows, and the falcon's eyes has not seen it. The proud beasts have not trodden it. The lion has not passed over it. Man puts his hand to the flinty rock and overturns mountains by the roots. He cuts out channels in the rocks, and his eye sees every precious thing. He dams up the stream so that they do not trickle. And the thing that is hidden he brings out to light. And so all the work man does to find gold and silver and riches and precious metals and precious stones. And so he turns the world upside down. He goes places that animals don't even see and know and that birds can't even see and know from above. And he will stop at nothing to do whatever he has to do to find it, to mine it, and to bring it to light. Verse 12, but where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its worth, and it is not found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not in me, and the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be bought for gold, and silver cannot be weighed as its price. And so man will search hard for wealth and do whatever he takes to have to find it, the riches. He'll mine it, he'll search it, he'll work it, he'll do whatever it takes. But when it comes to wisdom, where do you look? Where do you find it? It's not found here in creation and by man, he is saying. And he's saying that the worth of it can't even be compared to gold, silver, and stones, and metals. Um, because wisdom is worth way more than that. And so that is what Job is saying. And he says it can't be purchased. And so can't find it, can't purchase it but it's worth the most, is wisdom. Verse 16, it cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in precious onyx or sapphire. What's Ophir? It is a location, a geographic location of precious gold. Gold and glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. And so wisdom, what is it? It's worth more than anything. Man should try to search for it more than he tries to search for wealth, yet he doesn't because he doesn't understand that wisdom is truly the most important commodity that you can have, and nothing can measure up to it. And so now we get to the big part of the chapter. And so now is where you want to get your highlighter ready because here we go. He's going to answer the question here at the end. From where then does wisdom come and where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and death say, we have heard a rumor of it with our ears. And so the living and the dead cannot find and cannot understand true wisdom. True wisdom doesn't come from man, doesn't come from the world, doesn't come from creation. Where does true wisdom come from? It comes from the Lord. It comes from the creator of the heavens and the earth. It comes from the maker. And Job is going to go there. Verse 23, highlighter. God understands the way to it, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth, and he sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the wind its weight and appointed the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning and the thunder, and he saw it and declared it, he established and searched it out. Wisdom comes from the creator, comes from God. And the wisdom is in his creation of how he created everything and how everything works and functions the way that it does. It is amazing. It blows us away. You know, there's a part of our understanding that we can understand God through his word, through the Bible, and through Jesus, which Job didn't have that. But that's where we find our wisdom. And yet, that part that he has revealed to us through Jesus and through his word, we can understand. But there is a part of God that is hidden from us to where we even state as Lutherans that God is incomprehensible, that it is hard for us to comprehend the fullness of God because how awesome he is and how limited our brains and understanding are. And Job is getting there. Look at verse 28. And he said to man, behold, highlighter, 
something big when you hear the word behold. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. And so what is wisdom? It is a fear. It is a respect and a reverence and an awe for Almighty God. And that God is wisdom. And we are living out that wisdom when we turn from evil and we follow his ways. And so Job says to his friends, you have knowledge and you are right. Many times a person may suffer because of the choices and the consequences that they make. And many times you are right. The wicked will have consequences and they will have punishment and sufferings for the wickedness and the evil they call. And that happens, but not all the time. There is more to knowledge and that that is wisdom. And in my case, I didn't do anything like that. And so God only knows and he is wise and that your knowledge is limited. It's not full wisdom. Full wisdom only comes from God. And so you may make many valid points, friends, is what Job is saying to his friends, but you don't have complete understanding. And in this case, you're off base because I haven't done anything like that. And so what is wisdom? It is the fear of the Lord. When we th went through confirmation class as uh, students, you know, we would memorize Luther's small catechism, the fundamentals of the faith, and we would memorize the commandment and its meanings. And they would start with, we should fear and love God. Wisdom is the fear, the respect and reverence of all and knowing the love of God and his true wisdom in Christ Jesus and when we are in the word, living out the word, and we are growing in our relationship with Jesus, the true wisdom, that is wisdom, that is understanding. And so Job answers the question brilliantly. Where is wisdom? It is found in the Lord. And what is it? It is having a respect, a reverence, an awe, and a fear for him, and doing things his ways, not the ways of evil, but doing good. And a pretty profound answer for Job, who didn't have the Word of God, didn't have the Bible, and didn't, and comes before Jesus and the cross. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful that you have given us this wonderful gift, the gift of your Word, the gift of wisdom and truth and knowledge. Help us to understand it by the power of your Holy Spirit, and not just understand it, but to live it out because your ways are better than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Lord, as you continue to do a work in us by the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to mold us and shape us to be your children. Remind us of your love and your promises and your ways so that we will not just learn it, believe it and trust it, but actually do it. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed weekend. We will see you in church on Sunday. Services at 8, 9, and 1030 as we continue to go through our summer sermon series, God in the Ruins, as we continue to learn about the minor prophets and how we apply the word of God to our walk with Jesus. Have a blessed day as you follow the wisdom of God's word and that word made flesh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.